Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Guys, today I am joined with Jake Karpovage. Jake is an expert in the industry of helping entrepreneurs and high performers actually solve what some people I think might see as simple problems, but they're really the most difficult problems that we have, and they're problems with our minds. So, Jake, just go ahead, and uh, I'd love for you to introduce yourself, man. Hey, thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah, definitely. It's a pleasure being here. So, uh, a kind of brief synopsis of everything. I spent six years in the military during that whole time. I was working a lot of security gigs and still maintaining all my college curriculum so I could graduate with my bachelor's in under four years and just three. So, really, really short synopsis of what I've done. And a lot of that comes down to sticking to a disciplined schedule and, and how I've maintained a very, very good mindset throughout all of that. So Nice. And so that's so your background, right? Like from the military and from being in the security industry for a while and school. So that's sort of where all of this stuff about focus and mindset comes from. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today, right? specifically how you can almost transform your mind from a liability into an asset exactly right? so that's what you mentioned to me before the call uh tell everybody if you can sort of define that a little bit more what you mean by t- changing your mind from a liability into an asset sure so we all have different mindsets and what it really comes down to is if your mind is working for you and generating solutions to problems that you occur on a daily basis, then I would say, look, it's already an asset. But if you have problems with discipline, with with being disciplined to a specific schedule, with self-confidence problems, with, with negative thinking, anything under the sun in regards to your mind, then I would say, look, right now it's a liability. And how can you transform that into an asset? How can we make your mind a productive tool that you can use throughout your daily activities instead of trying to get external motivation from somewhere else yeah. and having to rely on all these other external factors. So that's what it really comes down to. Nice. And so right when you, you just said that whole thing about external factors, right? Yeah, of instead of having to rely on that, that's what sort of boils down to uh, what our first topic here is, is self-talk, right? Exactly not needing external factors uh dive dive a little bit deeper into that like what exactly is self-talk and and how can people start to change it in themselves almost sure so very very simple exactly how it sounds self-talk is how you talk to yourself but in your own mind you don't need to you know act like a paranoid person and start you know like speaking out loud and and, you know like uh jake you know is this okay jake and it's just very very weird Okay, but you can do it all within your mind. And the biggest thing to consider when you're talking to yourself, if it's during like a meditation session, if it's while you're dreaming even, you can go like very, very advanced into it. But the biggest thing to consider is, is it positive or negative? If it's negative, you need to change that into being optimistic, into all the positivity that you can get from your mind. So that's what the really, really like, the fundamental idea of what this really comes down to is, is your self-talk positive or negative? If it's negative, first things first, you got to change it into positive, you know, a positive state of mind. Gotcha. I'm sure you've heard the expression, change your inner world, you change your outer world. Yeah. Kind of what this goes down into, so. Yeah, it definitely is. So, I mean, it can definitely be easier said than done to sure. go from a negative mentality to a positive mentality. And actually a question that I got the other day that I'll pose on to you is, you know, let's say you're going through your day to day and all of a sudden just something goes out of whack. You get a bad email uh, from a coworker or you get a call that your kid just got into a fight or all of a sudden you're on a sales call and somebody cusses you out over the phone. Sure. Right? How can you sort of prevent that one instance from throwing the rest of your day out of whack. Sure, so you're already focused and I'm kind of, you know, taking the advanced concept from being focused instead of multitasking while you're doing the sales call. But if you're already focused and you're putting brain power into the sales call that you're doing, you're there, you're present in that moment. You're not thinking about anything else. 
you're not thinking about, you know, you're, you're not distracted from another situation. So, and, and this kind of goes down into time management in terms of like who else is dealing with your other ongoing situations, who else is taking care of your kid. If you have a wife, you know, that example you brought up, um, and you're, you're delegating all your other tasks that you go down into. But if you're already focused on that sales call, if you know in your heart, in your mind, that you didn't do anything wrong and there was something legitimately going wrong with that person, maybe you had some sort of Tourette's breakout, for example, then you know in your mind that, okay, well, this is just something that I'm dealing with at the moment. You're talking to yourself positively in the moment. You say, I didn't do anything wrong because I'm fully confident in my belief that I didn't do anything wrong. So just let it happen. Let it bounce off of you. It was just another, you know, like events that you you dealt with, uh, kind of like an objection if we're, if we're talking about sale here, and then just move forward. Okay. So you're saying basically be just almost focus in the moment, and uh, you know understand that what you're doing right then and there is with the very best intentions. Right? Exactly. And so that way you don't have to worry about it later on. Exactly. Exactly. You always should be present in the moment and don't let, you know, your sales calls and all these other negative things that you might experience in your day to day life affect like your inner belief and your inner self. -confidence. Oh, wow. So it's it's all about like, yeah, sure, you can you can experience negative circumstances. I mean, doing all my security gigs and I'm kind of going off on a, a little bit tangent here, but like Please. I got fights. I got in fights all the time. I like, I had to disarm people with knives trying to stab me. And like, that's not fun, no matter which way you look at it, okay? Like, that's a negative aspect. And, you yeah. know, but I don't bring that home. I don't say like, you know, like I, I go out with my friends and I don't think about the dude that was just trying to stab me that was high on meth. Like, I don't, I don't think about those things and bring them home to my other activities. I just, I was present in the moment. I dealt with it there and it stays there. Man, that is, that is absolutely craziness, right? Some of these, yeah. I'm sure you have so many stories. Yeah, of course. Um, and I would love, you know, if you can, when, if they ever pop in your mind, don't feel like you're going on a tangent, please. I love to hear them. And so let's move right. a little bit into the next topic that you'd already mentioned. That was focus. Sure. Right. And so we're talking about if you're focused sort of in the moment, then it can help you to almost have better positive self-talk as well. Right. Or at least right. shift your negative self-talk to positive. And so um, give maybe if possible some actionable advice on how people can be focused in the moment or maybe even what takes people away from focus and what you recommend, what, the, what, what you recommend they do to work on it. Yeah, exactly. So the biggest thing, and we've all seen the studies, we've all come across this, how multitasking is bad. Now, if you're using multitasking in the correct way, it's actually very, a very, very, very good tool to be productive throughout the day. But focus is different from multitasking because multitasking is really just prioritizing your tasks and doing some things that don't require a lot of brain power, some that do. But really what it comes down into focus is where your brain power is going and how much brain power and for how long you're putting into it, uh, you know, like for that specific task. So it's, it's, I don't want to say tunnel vision, but it's kind of a good example of like, I'm going 100% in plan A, um, and I'm totally focused in it on this moment, all of my brain power is going towards plan A, but I might have plan B working in the background for me based on what I've already done throughout the day, kind of like prioritizing that task, um, for example, passive wealth. Nice kind of like you know like the plan b you're just multitasking yeah. that doesn't require a lot of brain power but your plan a is like something that you're directly influencing so you have to devote brain power to that you have to be focused to that you can't multitask with that mm -hmm. okay so it sounds like what, I'm, what you're saying mostly here is just it comes down to prioritization with with multitasking it does but focus it's really just eliminating the distractions around you and this kind of goes into uh, being disciplined to staying in a good environment but eliminating all those negative distractions around you so that you can be focused 
right? So if if your phone is one of the biggest things, leave your phone in another room when you're going to bed that you can like meditate properly and that you can be focused. That's just like one example. Or you know, if you have to, if you have to go to the Starbucks, if you have to listen to white noise or or go to somewhere where you can't be in a proper environment to focus, that's what you have to do. Nice. I, I like it a lot. So that's a great one, right? Like remove distractions, our phones especially, right? People freak out. But hey, if you understand, okay, I don't have any meetings already scheduled for the next hour even, right? Don't make it anything bigger than it needs to be. Put your phone on airplane mode or turn it all the way off even. Like the Simple. world's not going to gonna die, right? Like yep. the worst thing possibly could happen one hour of you being removed, it's not gonna affect that. So I like it a lot. Yeah. Cool. So um, earlier you mentioned uh, meditation, right? How do yeah. you think meditation plays into the whole realm of, of focus, maybe even self-talk as well? Sure, so yeah, and, and one of the biggest things in meditation is learning how to do self-talk faster and better. That's what meditation kind of allows you to do is it like, allows you to become comfortable with yourself and i do it twice daily once in the morning uh once before night and and night time for like this really really cool meditation session that i do but in the mornings it's really to sort of get all of my personal thoughts out of the way to sort of like break down everything that i'm feeling in that moment that i might be wanting to feel throughout the day um to kind of do like a personal diagnosis in the mornings get that out of the way and then I can focus on all of my professional activities because I've already hashed out all of the personal things that are going on. So if, if you haven't done that in the first thing of the day and that's still lingering in the back of your mind that might be impeding you during your sales call when you're trying to be focused but you might have you know like Oh, my 14 year old daughter wants, you know, this like new car in two years and it's it's always going on in the back of your mind. Well, you need to be able to relieve that early in the mornings so that you don't have anything else going on and you can just be 100% there present in the moment. Nice. So meditation and is it is specifically mindfulness that you're practicing or when you say meditation, what does that sort of look like to you? Yeah, so, I mean, mindfulness, meditation, whatever you really want to call it, it's just really what it's kind of going into is sort of like a therapy session that a clinical psychologist would, would do with you. So, and your mind, I mean, you can imagine all of these things, however you need to like format it to sort of talk to yourself is going to be the way you need to do it. A lot of it comes down to experimenting. But I would say for someone getting right into it, just do five or 10 minutes and just breathe. You know, just, just breathe something as simple as that. Just eliminate all the distractions around you. Just breathe and sort of just feel everything. Feel the air, uh, smell, whatever the smell is. You know, if you're gonna light a candle or something like that, just sort of calm down, let thoughts go in and out of your head, you know, whatever you're thinking in the moment. And that sort of allows you to really, really see that, oh, I am thinking like really, really negatively. Like I am thinking about the dude trying to stab me yesterday. And like, now that I really, really thought about it on a deeper level, I can just let that go. Yeah. Nice. It's, tr it's truly just yeah. being in the moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's really, it. it's as simple as that being one in the moment so um the subject of, of meditation is one that's very near and dear to my heart actually um i mean i first found meditation it was almost four years ago now uh, with my first job out of college and uh, it was just so stressful and it was like honestly a lot of negative because it was a sales job as well oh yeah and, like I was so anxious. I wasn't sleeping. It was awful. And then finally, you know, I don't remember who steered me in that direction exactly, but it helped me to start to be able to let go of things in the past and not tie all of my self-worth necessarily to just this job. Um, exactly. Yep. Which is pretty crazy. And so, I mean, it definitely yeah. wasn't this popular thing. 
so for you, I mean, your background is, is somewhat intense. How, how did you find meditation? So I grew up in a very religious style of life. And to me, meditation is actually way, way more important than praying now because wow. it focuses on myself. It's like, hey, how can I be better? What are the things that I need to accomplish on a personal level? And I, it, the most meditation um, is during my nighttime. That's mm -hmm. really what it comes down to. And like what I'm doing right before bed, what I'm doing uh, as I'm sleeping, that's what I really, really get. Um, yeah, there, there's so much details that go into that. So I mean, my mind is kind of like going crazy with imagination already. Like what I'm going to do tonight, like, oh, it's yeah. going to be this crazy session. I'm going to be surrounded by people that just support me and, and I can communicate with them on like this deeper level. I can gain knowledge from like all this infinite intelligence. So yeah, it's like, it's crazy. You can go really, really deep into it. And there's a lot of books that you can read on all the different styles of meditation. You can even do it while you're having yoga sessions. It's crazy. So, I mean, oh yeah, you, you can go into a deep stretch while you're meditating and it's like this body release while your your mind is releasing so it's like it's really really crazy uh, meditation is very very cool to me um but i sort of getting back into it i did grow up on that religious side of things and right now i i'd say i'm much more spiritual than religious um and I really don't want to dive too deep into that because religious is like, or religion is a hot topic and you know, like I'm not going to try and say like, you need to be a, a Buddhist or, or a Muslim here. Sure. Yeah. It's really whatever, whatever floats anyone's boat, but the general idea of like how prayer is less important to me than meditation is, is because meditation usually revolves around the idea of affirmations and visualizing something is already occurring then asking for it and prayer a lot of the times you hear people like asking for wealth or asking for a good body or or, or a very very like good girl to um eventually have like a, a, a prosperous family and a lot of that is just asking asking for something that in the subconscious mind you actually don't believe you're just asking for it and you feel like oh if i ask for it it'll be provided to me on a silver platter but meditation on the other hand is focusing on already visualizing that silver platter coming to you and it's already coming and and you can sort of see it you can touch it you can smell it you can you can even when you get really, really good at this, you can sort of see the physical features of the girl that's going to come to you that you want in your life, right? So, and a lot of that, you know, comes down to imagination. Um, yeah. But what it really, really focuses on, and I just really love it, and it, again, the general consensus is prayer is kind of like you're asking for it. Meditation mm -hmm. is like, it's already there. I'm just waiting for it to happen. Nice. I, I like it. I like it how you framed it in the sense of visualization, of that yeah. you're seeing it already in occurrence, already occurred, and you're the one that is making it happen. You're not just asking, hoping that it will come to you. Right. 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 Yep. No, cool. I'm totally with you. Um, nice. And so, you know, that's sort of a focus multitasking. Um, so we can move sort of a little bit to discipline here. And uh, I'm guessing that most of your discipline came from uh, the military, right? Um, or yeah. talk to us a little bit, what, where did that interest come from? What first sparked of that? And, and why do you teach that now to entrepreneurs and, and high performers? So I joined the military at 17 years old with parent consent while I was still a junior in college or, or, or a junior in high school. And I did boot camp or basic training in between my junior and senior summer. After I came back from basic training, I, I did my senior year of high school. And then when I got when I graduated from high school, then I went for my job training in the military, which was um, 19 Delta Cavalry Scouts. For for those of you that are, are watching this and don't know, it's pretty much just infantry, but more reconnaissance. 
Okay, so, gotcha. Um, it's it's kind of like Boy Scouts, but like a combat Boy Scout sort of thing. <laughs> 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 that's just a joke. Yeah, to put it like lightly. Yeah, right. but the military really refined sort of discipline. Like I've always been a disciplined person because of how I grew up. You know, like sticking to religious, you know, like commandments or something of that nature. Um, how my parents sort of taught me to, you know, like make sure on a daily basis that you're going to brush your teeth, you know, even if it's something as simple as that. So we all have sort of how we've grown up does factor into how disciplined we might be, you know, like after high school. And then the military, once I really, really got into it, it was like, taking it to a whole nother advanced level of like waking up at 3, 4.30 in the mornings to, to make sure that you get your workout in because you have so much to do be, uh, like earlier in the day. So now it's kind of like, okay, well, look, and the military instilled this into me. Now it's like, okay, well, if look, if I have a lot to do in the day, I have to start my day. I have to, my professional tasks start at 6 a.m. in the day. I would have to wake up at three to make sure I get a good hour or 30 minutes in the gym. Like I have to go to the gym because I'm sticking to my discipline schedule. I can't all of a sudden, you know, say like, okay, I'm just gonna do it this one day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break just this one day because that one day will just snowball effect and then we'll go into two, three, four. Pretty soon you're fat again. Yeah, there, there we go. So you didn't have any discipline. And so um, what, what you're sort of touching on, and if I can make the connection, it seems like discipline and schedules go directly hand in hand. And I think maybe you mentioned that earlier, even before we started, that a lack of schedule can be one of the most detrimental things to entrepreneurs and high performers themselves. Um, what are your sort of your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I don't try to keep like a hour by hour, minute by minute schedule now. It's just more of like general categories of what I need to fulfill that day. And how long I think that each of those things are going to take so that I can work towards, you know, like the, the day's goal, for instance. Um, I used to be, you know, have it all over my phone, all over my laptop. I have physical copies of my calendars. And you get so focused on like following a schedule that sometimes you're not even allowing room for flexibility. You're, you're not even yeah. allowing room for, for going out with your friends and, and meeting somebody you never thought you would have met. And all of a sudden you're, you're kicking it off and it's like, but then you might need to end it because you're sticking to your schedule and you're like, well, I got to be up at three in the morning. So... Uh, I'm going to leave you now, but if you like stayed an hour extra, it could have been yeah. like, you, you could have met the girl of your dreams. Interesting. So I do allow flexibility in my schedules now, but it's really, I, I, I keep it organized to the point of like, Hey, these are the things that I need to accomplish. And I might have some times associated with them, mm. but I'm not like, like for instance, if this call goes over 15 minutes, I'm not gonna be bothered. It's kind yeah, of like yeah. like I already set my my schedule to where it's like okay, I'm gonna allow like a 15 minute you know sort of a uh, plus or minus time for the interview, mm -hmm. and then I just allow flexibility. I allow things to happen because I mean it does come to a point where a lot of these other entrepreneurs, high level performers, professionals, CEOs, etc. etc. They're like sticking to a schedule that's so repetitive and they're so productive throughout the day, but they're yeah. so bored because nothing else happens. It's kind of like going into the office and a nine to five job doing the same exact thing. And like, yeah, you can be knocking out your nine to five job, but that's very, very repetitive. And that's, that's, I mean, you're not allowing room for your mind to grow. You're not seeing new things on a daily basis. So still allow for that flexibility in your schedule but be disciplined enough to say like hey i do need to do my gym time the first thing in the morning if i need to push it back or push it forward to make sure i still get it in that's what you got to do so so i mean if, if you were out um on a very very long night you stayed up till 1 or 2 a.m 
I don't want you to say like, you know, like, oh, I'm only get, uh, I'm only gonna get an hour of sleep because I need to be at the gym at three in the morning. Like, kind of like you, no. you're yeah, you need to that. adjust. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're killing yourself. So if you really need to, just look, sleep six hours, six seven, like six to eight hours is usually the the a, a proper amount of sleeping time depending on the person. Um, but sleep six hours and then go to the gym maybe eight, ten in the yeah. morning, something like that, and then just just have one of those days where it's just yeah. adjust accordingly. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Nice. So the trick is. For discipline is you do need somewhat of a schedule it sounds almost more of just like a uh priorities list right essentially and then so have some sort of schedule or a list but also have room in there for flexibility because right you know for lack of a better term shit happens right you have to be able to adjust exactly you might end up yeah. in you might end up in the hospital definitely no doubt about it cool and so jake i mean for the last topic that uh, we had discussed, sort of talk about, funny enough, I think it almost wraps everything into it, um, at least in my mind, um, and it's self-confidence, right? Yes. Because at least for me, when it comes to self-confidence, uh, discipline helps increase self-confidence. Confidence. If you're efficient in multitasking, if you can focus, if you have great self-talk, that's also going to increase your self-confidence. So talk a little bit about just the importance of self-confidence. Um, I mean, how, how can people help to grow that? Because it is such an important thing. Yeah, so exactly what you were saying and all the things we've gone over so far, self-confidence is a byproduct of having good, positive self-talk being focused and having good prioritization and, and having good time management, still allowing for flexibility, but being disciplined as well. And self-confidence is just a byproduct of all those things. So that's kind of how I help people is in the long run, self-confidence is like this thing that's, you know, up here or, or, or let's, let's say down here in the very beginning, yeah. we're going to focus on, you know, like, uh, or focus on focus. Well, there you go discipline, self-talk, meditation, so on and so forth. And over time, that self-confidence is just gonna keep on going up. And the funny thing that I've noticed personally, there's no cap to self-confidence. There, there's no limit on it. It just, it, it keeps on going and going and going throughout all the experiences that I've had. Um, it's amazing. I, yeah. So self-confidence, that's how you can sort of gain self-confidence. The self-confidence is just believing in, in what I've sort of defined self-confidence for myself, like how I sort of think about it, um, what I tell the people it is. Self-confidence is like the belief in yourself that the course of action you are taking is 100% right. Even, even if someone sees it as 100% wrong, even if like logically even if factually it's 100 percent wrong i mean you see so many people yep. you see so many people uh doing something that's so wrong like practically logically but because they have so much self-confidence in themselves somehow it works out and it, it, wow. it baffles me every single time um you can have a person that's 60 70 years old and they're coming back and they're gonna get their their doctorate in psychology for instance it, it, it baffles me every single time but because they have so much self-confidence and they're not going to you know like allow all of these negative feelings to creep up they just bang it out they bang it out and because they believe in themselves that say like okay i'm gonna do this no matter what i have 100 percent belief in myself that it's going to be the right course of action to take it's a done deal it, it, it's a done deal you're just waiting for it to happen self-confidence and self-belief because then you can truly cause yourself or make yourself achieve anything right if you believe oh, yeah. that you can do it you're going to find a way to do it right oh yeah oh yeah no doubt about it jake well hey man i really really appreciate your time this is sort of the end of the episode that I want to give you the opportunity to give yourself just a shameless plug, right? Where can people connect sure. with you and how can people maybe even work with you best? 
Yeah, so the best way and the easiest way. Everybody has Facebook. Just add me on Facebook, send me a message, do whatever you need to do on Facebook. But it's the easiest, most practical way and the main way in, in terms of what I'm doing. And I'm going to be posting links to this once you have it uploaded. I've got some other uh, motivational posts on there, or I shouldn't say motivational, but mindset focused posts um, on there. And so that's where you can get in touch with me. And, and, and that's my personal Facebook page, and that's just as simple as Jake Carpenter, it's just exactly how you spell it here. Beautiful, guys. So I'll put a link down below. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to Jake. I mean, that's how we got connected, uh, was just through, honestly, a little cold outreach. Yep. So reach out, ask some questions. I'll put a link down below. Um, Jake, really, man, I, I appreciate your time so, so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All cool. Right. Jake, thanks. Have a great day, everybody.